Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a quick video on how to do uh, craftsman style heads on windows and doors. Show you some tips and tricks and how you can uh, get fast and efficient with this style of door and window header. So right here, we've got a cased opening. You'll notice this is a three and a quarter wide by three quarter inch thick casing that has a radius on both edge. Very nice casing profile. I don't like square cornered one by four casing. I like a true casing that has a back relief and east edges. It's a lot more durable and it paints up better. Then above that, we've got an inch and a quarter bullet trim, a one by six and a one by two. I'll show you a little bit more uh, about that next. So pardon my mess, I'm winding down on this house as far as the basic trim package goes. But you'll see here two different, I'll, I'll just call them moldings. One is an inch and a quarter bullet trim. Uh, this is an inch and a quarter wide and a half inch thick and it comes milled with a bull nose on the front. And that is what we use right above the, right above the casing right here. It comes milled like that so it's super fast to install. On the top piece of our header and our window sill, I get one by two. This is already ripped uh, and I shouldn't even say ripped, it's S4S one by two. So it's an inch and a half wide, three quarter inch thick and uh, I can get it just like this so it's pretty much ready to go for installation. And then of course uh, one by six, everyone always asks me, this is finger jointed poplar, um, again by that and 16 foot sticks. All of this comes from uh, my millwork wholesaler, Cutter Woodworking, and I get it through my lumber yard. So they have these profiles in stock. So a couple, I'll show you a couple little tricks on how to cut this stuff super fast. Uh, what I do with my routers and then uh, my super secret stop block makes this go really quick. First, let's get into the router setup. You got a couple options up here. You can do a mitered return on this stuff, but for paint grade, it's really not necessary and I find it slower. So what I do to, instead of a mitered return on this bull nose, I just cut it square which is super simple and fast. And then I hit the ends with a router bit from both sides. So here I have a palm router and this I keep in my van and it's always chucked up with a quarter inch bit just for this reason. So what you do after you've got this cut off square with your miter saw, you can just take this bit And I just hit it from both sides, get a little bit of fuzz on there, but uh, then you're good to go for installation. So you're not messing around with cutting a bunch of mitered returns and gluing them and all that. I mean, this is production trim work. You've got to find ways to do things faster and get the same results. And I find this is a very acceptable way to do this bullet trim. So as we step up from the bullet trim, we get to this one by six piece. Now this casing, let me show you that. This is the casing. You can see it's relieved on the back. That makes it sit tighter to the wall. That's what you want. And then it comes three and a quarter wide, three quarter thick, and it's already got the edges eased. So that's a 5 32nd radius edges what I like to do sorry about the mic being backwards what I like to do is actually hit this edge right here with that same round over bit so it matches right here just something I do I, I don't really like it being a sharp square corner but I think it flows really nice when you have that radius and it just kind of follows all the way down next up the one by two the one by two comes S4S, so it's all squared corners. Um, 
since we've got a rounded edge, an eased edge on our casing, I feel that this needs to also have an eased edge. I think it looks better and paints up nicer. So you'll notice up here, I eased all these edges. Let me take you to a window too and show you that. So here are a couple windows if the camera will focus with all this lighting going on here. But you can see um, the apron and the sill here. I think you call that a sill. It's all got eased edges around here. And I think that makes it look really nice. And again, this round over from our casing, I bring it down on this edge across the bottom. Same thing on top again round up here and then all these edges are also eased around here again for paint grade i'm not messing with a mitered return right here it's a lot of fussing for nothing you can just cut it off square and then hit these edges with the router and it's a lot faster in my opinion you can see here as we walk around i've got pieces uh leaning up everywhere you don't want to cut one window or door at a time you want to batch cut things make a cut list and that'll get the job done a lot faster so next i'm going to show you how uh, to go about getting measurements and then how to use this offset stop block system here to really knock these out fast The first thing you want to do is get your measurements. Um, I install the casing legs first on all the windows and doors. Um, so get that completely out of the way. Then go around and get your outside to outside measurements. Make a cut list. Same thing for the windows. Whenever I measure the windows, you want to make sure that you're measuring the top and the bottom because they might not be quite the same. Um, should be pretty close. Sometimes I'll, I'll take my rubber mallet and knock one of the sides in a little bit to make them the same. Otherwise, just take the average, you know, if it's like a 16th off or whatever. But you're gonna wanna take a bunch of your outside to outside measurements and then move over to the saw to do your cutting. Something to notice again first, that outside to outside measurement is going to be the exact same for that top one by six and then also for that bottom one by four apron so keep that in mind you're going to be cutting that one by four and that one by six the exact width of your outside to outside measurement now on these this is an inch and a quarter bull nose and that's an inch and a half technically to do this correctly this should be this offset right here should match this one which would make this three quarter inches off the edge of this and since this is an inch and a quarter technically this should be a half inch off well rather than making it complicated and having two different offsets i just cut them both five eighth inch overhanging so um you know D agree or disagree that, that's just what i do i've done it for years on this style and i think it looks good so back to the saw okay i've uh done some videos on my miter saw setup and as most of you know the cornerstone of my miter saw setup is this rubber or not rubber tape this steel tape and there's a, a magnetic tape underneath there and what this allows me to do is I can adjust this steel tape and calibrate it perfectly uh, each time I'm setting up my saw. So front edge of the stop block is going to be exactly what I need it to be with my tape. So if I've got this set on 36 inches right here, then it's gonna, I'm going to bump to this and it's going to cut a piece 36 inches. Now you notice it's offset on the bottom. You can see here I've got an inch and a quarter offset here. Why is that? Because 5 eighths plus 5 eighths is an inch and a quarter. So whenever I'm cutting my one by six and my one by four for my apron, I'm gonna 
slide and bump those to this top part of the stop block. But then whenever I'm cutting off, uh, whenever I'm cutting my uh, bullet trim in my one by two, I'm gonna take my stop block, I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit and I can bump to that then right there without having to move my stop block or do any math in my head and that's automatically gonna cut these pieces an inch and a quarter longer. So I can just go from my cut list and keep moving my stop block and cut my one by six pieces on the top stop and then my one by two and bullet trim on the bottom stop block and it's super quick and it's kind of idiot proof. Now as far as installation goes, after I'm done routing them, I'll take them to the opening that they're going to get nailed to and then go around and nail all these off. A lot of good carpenters I know have the opinion of building these head pieces on the workbench uh, as a unit and then bringing them over and installing them. I personally find I get better results installing them piece by piece, which I'll explain in a minute. I think uh, I get tighter results and it's just as fast for me. So I'll kind of go through what I do. There's more ways to do this than one, but this is what I like to do personally. Starting out right here, imagine we don't have anything installed yet, you just got your casing legs on here. First thing I do is I put my bullet trim on top and I nail down into the casing. So the bullet trim is getting not nailed usually two nails, 15 gauge down into the casing right there and over here. Next step, I'm going to take my 1 by 6 nail that on, and then I'm going to shoot from the underside and then make sure my bull nose is pushed up against the jam here, and I'm going to nail that up into this 1 by 6 So that's going to be a really good connection there. And then to finish off, I'm going to come up here and put my on top and nail down into that one by six and I find that gives me really good results. So hopefully that maybe helped you guys um, give you a little insight into the system I use for this kind of a header detail. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, anything you dif do differently and uh, I think that'll be it for this video. Now I'll take a couple videos of actually nailing something off so you can see that too. I realized regarding this stop block, I'm probably gonna get a lot of questions about that. So I wanna kind of preempt that and go into a little bit more detail on this. So, get my mic turned around, there we go. This plastic part here is a stop block made for the fast cap best fence system. So if you want this part of it, buy that from fast caps website. The rest of this is custom made. Um, I'm not going to go into super detail on this right now. I'll probably make a video about it in the future, but knob back here allows this to adjust. We've got a crosshair right here. You can see that very fine red crosshair. You line that up on your tape wherever you want it, tighten down your knob. There's adjustment here on this bottom part and it will go quite a ways out to allow me to also use this for mitered casing. So for three and a half inch casing, I would make my offset to seven inches, tighten this up, and then I could essentially just bump to, uh, to this bottom block and that would automatically offset for my outside dimension. So I could put my crosshairs on my inside dimension for mitered casing and then just bump to the bottom block and it's gonna offset it seven inches. So super handy, I'm gonna move this back to an inch and a quarter since I'm using a 5 8 inch times two offset here. But that's how that works. One of the best things I ever did was that stop block. It's made me a lot of money, uh, well worth the time investment. Probably have to make a video on that in the future. Shameless plug while I cut and route these guys. If you enjoy the content, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Drop a comment if uh, 
you would care to do so. And if you want to support the channel and help me justify my time on this, you can purchase tools through the links that I provide in the notes or in the top comment in the comment section. Doesn't cost you anything. Amazon gives me a kickback and helps this all be worth my time. So appreciate your support and we'll move on to installation now. So now I've got these windows cut and it's time to install. One other trick that you wanna do is get yourself a gauge block. You want this ripped at 5 8 which is gonna match the offset of our trim pieces. So then you can just put this block up on top and mark with your pencil on the outside for the bull nose, outside for the one by two cap, and then inside for the one by six. You can see those pencil marks on there. Do that all the way around the window, including the bottom of the window. Nailing this stuff off is pretty easy. Nailer, and I'm actually using two and a half inch nails and I'm not switching back and forth between nailers it's time consuming and another nailer to drag around to find I don't need it so I'm going to start putting my sill stool whatever you want to call it line it up with my mark on the outside apron again lining it up with my pencil marks then I'm going to shoot down That's it. 